Continuing on our quest to not follow the rules, we make our way to Dunyu Ruins. This underwater ruin is home to many luxurious chests as well as a few geoculus. Curious adventurers that wander in find themselves playing hide and seek with magic torches. These need to be lit to dispel the barriers surrounding the geototem that, once activated, drains the area of water and allows players to tackle the next challenge involving Seelie. But could we completely loot Dunyu without ever draining the water? Or is it simply too big of an obstacle? Let's dive in. Alright, diving in doesn't really work. We can't dive in this game to begin with. Well, technically speaking. If we're going to get down there, we first need to go much farther down than the water, out into the land of the floating mountains. As is the norm, navigating beneath the map is no easy task. But with some work, we can make it over to the ruins. When I first explored this area on my main account, which had long since lowered the water and looted Dunyu, I noticed that the plane of water sat at the lowest part of the map. I mean, that makes sense, right? We lowered the water, so the water plane should be low. However, Water in this game can be invisible, and having multiple layers of water stacked atop one another isn't unprecedented. We can see an example of this below Liyue Harbor. Luckily, that is not the case here. We can see here that the water is lowered on the left, that is the main account, and not lowered on the right, which is the new account. Water problem solved, let's pop back into the map and check things out. The camera certainly does not like that the water has not been drained, and at times randomly zooms into first person. Shooting arrows down here doesn't do much, and depending on the position, Amber sometimes can't even aim up. And yes, you are seeing that right. It can rain underwater. Similar to arrows, our pal the Ruin Guard can't fire his missiles. We're just low enough that the irksome water collision box doesn't reach when we climb up here. Open the chest and no loot. Scratch my head at this part, but later on I happened to notice that the loot had instantly teleported to the surface of the water. We can see it up there, scattered and floating about. If the water collision was reaching the items, I honestly have no clue why it wasn't whisking Kaya away. But we take those blessings. One chest down. The next chest is over yonder. Climb up here, enter with someone other than Kaya because he tends to get stuck in the window, and here we are. Because torches are here, I just had to try it. If close with Amber, they can be lit despite being underwater. Anyways, chest two opened, and notably the loot did not teleport to the surface. Okay, the final chest. I tried my hardest to complete this without dispelling the barrier, but it just doesn't seem plausible. There are a few reasons for this. 1. While the barrier doesn't appear to extend beneath the ground, it is sitting upon a cylindrical piece of terrain that sits lower than anything else in the vicinity. That makes grabbing the inside wall of it next to impossible. Two. It may look like just one, but there are actually multiple cylindrical walls in play here. There also appears to be an invisible ceiling connecting them. 3. In order for this to work, we would need to be able to move straight up without the aid of any walls or flooring. Does that make this impossible? I think with the right combination of characters, or even with co-op, it might be doable. But uh... <laughs> Getting those characters is no longer possible at the moment. I'm looking at you, Venti. And Albedo, as well. Attempts to enter the locked room with the Sealy also ended in failure. It was like threading a needle this climb. Threading a needle where one end is blocked off because an invisible wall blocks the way and touching it forces your character to let go. Anyways, that all said, we'll be dispelling the barrier with the help of the Sealy and clearing the time trial. Our first friend is actually above the surface, so back up we go and follow the little guy around until he takes the dive. The Ruin Guard is still trying to attack even up here. Get this guy some torpedoes. 
The second is also near the Ruin Guard. There is another chest back here, and if we open it, well, the loot is trying to go up, not going to risk jumping to reach it. The final Sealy is behind the time trial. Much like the other projectiles, Hydro Slime's water bubbles don't function right. They don't evaporate like the others, imagine water evaporating underwater, but instead float in place. They do do damage if run into or hit by the burst. Slimes also won't do their plunge attack because of the water. Here's something neat, that tiny blockade in the door is actually two portacoluses stuffed into the wall. We can see them down here once the trial is cleared. Okay, the final Sealy is guided and the barrier dispelled. There's no water inside and we can drop below the platform and walk up these spears. If we open this final chest, no loot again. But not because it was whisked away to the surface. This final chest just puts everything into your pockets. And that's a wrap! Done your ruins completed without ever lowering the water. Riding the wind current underwater. Huh. Look at that. Wind is rushing out of the water and there's not so much as a ripple on the surface. Should leave some players confused if I ever get to hosting multiplayer on this account. Anyways, thanks for watching! This was a fun challenge and if you enjoyed the show, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any ideas for places or puzzles to tackle with limitations similar to this, drop them in the comments below and I'll do some snooping. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.